In this video, we are going to talk about five journal prompts to start healing the fearful avoidant attachment style. I am Pauline and I am so happy you are here because these are just very concrete questions. You can sit down and just write out and they will definitely help you on your healing journey. So to start this off, um, when I was in the middle of my fearful avoidant attachment style trigger phase, crash state, um, and I started healing or I wanted to heal, one of the very first things I did was actually buy a big ass book to write in. And I called it my brain dump book and I have it here and I still use it every day. And as you can see, there's like <laughs> spots on it and everything. <laughs> it's, um, it's heavily used. And I just had this moment. I remember the moment where I was like, my head is so full. I cannot deal with this. It's, I feel like it's going to burst. I have to let it out. I have to let these thoughts out. And I didn't up till then because I was just so scared that if I wrote things down, they would, first of all, become true, which is magical thinking, which is a cognitive distortion, which isn't true. Uh, but second of all, I was just afraid that if I would start writing things down, I would realize um, that my boyfriend wasn't the one and I had to break up with him. Um, and I was also scared, third, third reason I didn't do it, that when I would write it down, it would be real. In a way, it felt like as long as I kept it inside, as long as I kept it in my brain, it wasn't completely real. And that also wasn't true because I was thinking about my relationship and how I was feeling and just every day, all day. So those three reasons kind of kept me from writing and I am so happy I didn't let them keep me from writing um, longer because all those things turned out to be my fear brain trying to keep me in fear. Your fear brain is just convinced that if you stay in fear and you stay alert, which means you have all these ruminating obsessive thoughts, that you will be safe. And that's just not true. So writing really helps. Writing anything really helps. When I got that book, I started writing and I think the first session I, I wrote for four hours and I stopped at 7 p.m. and I was just exhausted and just slept through the night, which was actually a good night's sleep because there's this there's just something magical about letting it out on paper. And I, I remember thinking, okay, I'm just going to put it on paper so I don't have to think about it right now. I can pick it back up tomorrow if I want to. And what happened is that a lot of the things I wrote down, I actually processed just by writing about them or, or writing them out. So it really, it really helps to write um, anything. But I will give you five questions, five journal prompts that will actually really help you uh, on your healing journey. So let's begin. The first question is which part of me is scared? And this is such an important and powerful question to ask because the moment you ask it, you realize that it's not all of you that is scared. It's just a part of you that is scared. And a lot of times it's that small inner child that has been through trauma um, that is just triggered somehow. And we tend to give so much power away to fear, which is so logical. I do not want you to make yourself wrong because of that. It was a survival mechanism for a long time. But when you see yourself as just all of me is scared, it can feel so powerless and so hopeless. And you always have this part of you, this core that is just peace and love that is always there, that will never be changed and has never been changed. It cannot be damaged. It is eternal. And that is also part of you. So asking the question, what part of me is scared, actually puts you in that role of the loving but also powerful grown-up that you are now. You have the power to change things, to, to do things differently. Um, and it really helps to look at yourself that way uh, and to also look at fear that way. That, that is just a part of you. And by asking which part, you actually shine a light on that and start healing it. So that is the first question. The, the second question is, what is the worst that could happen? And I can imagine you're thinking, oh, I don't want to think about that because that's really bad. And I completely understand that. Uh, it's scary to think about scary stuff that could happen. But the thing is, the more we think about it and we keep it in our brains, the more it is this 
this vague threat, this vague black cloud. I don't know if that even is a, a thing. Maybe that's just a, a literal translation. Um, this sense of impending doom is very um, highly linked <laughs> to the fearful avoidant attachment style. A lot of people with the fearful avoidant attachment style have this sense of impending doom. And that always feels vague and the vagueness of it makes it feel more scary. Your fear brain needs a couple of things to feel safe. And one of them is to have things be really concrete. So vagueness is scary because you don't have control over that. So you feel completely powerless. But as soon as you start writing down, okay, what is the absolute worst that could happen? And, um, you get this clear sense of what it is that will actually help your fear brain even if the worst is really bad even if the worst means i could die which sometimes it leads to because your fear brain is quite dramatic sometimes also <laughs> um so a lot of things could lead to like potential death or being alone forever but it's it really helps to write that down and see it and see that oh okay Yep, this could happen, but um, maybe it's only like a 0.0001% chance instead of the the feeling that it, it is going to happen uh, and it's 100% chance. You see what I mean? The, your fear brain tends to, if it sees a threat, it thinks that's going to happen 100% and that's just not true. So by getting that on paper, just very concrete, what is the worst that could happen? And then also... That is the next question. Ask yourself why. Why is that bad? Why is it bad if that would happen? Because a lot of times we obsess over these questions and then we're so scared of thinking about a certain thing. And um, for instance, a lot of people with fearful avoidant attachment style have relationship OCD or tendencies, also called relationship anxiety. And you just are so scared to figure out that you um that he or she is not the one after you've been married or after you know you bought a house together it's a commitment part of it so what i ask my girls sometimes is okay so what is the worst that could happen and they're like well what if i find out he or she is not the one and then we get a divorce and i'm like okay why is that a bad thing and that question alone is like a shock to their system because they, they just completely assume that getting divorced is like the worst thing ever. Yeah, well, then I will be alone. All right. Why is that a bad thing? Yep. Then I'll, I'll be lonely. And just as, as long as you keep asking why, 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 you get more and more clarity of what you're really afraid of. And a lot of times it comes back to a few core fears. And one of those is I am a bad person and people will figure that out or I will be alone forever um, and that is just way too painful or something bad will happen and that's that vague threat again. So the more you keep asking why, 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 the more you get to those three core fears and when you know the three core fears of the fearful avoidant attachment style, as you now know, that will help you so much to see that that is actually what you're scared of and those are not true. Those are survival mechanisms, those are or beliefs that you adopted when you were very young um, and you went through that trauma and they are not they are not truths they are not your truth um, so getting a very concrete sense of what is the worst that could happen and asking yourself why at least seven times that helps so much in um, actually giving you back a sense of, of power so that's the second question the third question um, is how is this thought or feeling protecting me with the fearful avoidant attachment style pretty much your whole system is just focused on protection you need to be safe you need security so pretty much everything you do i i almost i'm going to say 100 percent of the things that you do are geared towards protection and safety and security so all those things that happen, all those thoughts that you have, all those feelings that you have that you just don't understand and it can be so confusing, um, so painful, so, so awkward sometimes uh, or uncomfortable more, those always have a goal. 
and that goal is protecting you and getting a sense of the way you are protecting yourself and the way thoughts are protecting yourself and feelings are protecting yourself really helps you in seeing that they are not true that they are not as scary as they look and to give you one concrete example um uh, I noticed with a lot of, of the girls and men now too that um, go through my Dutch online program, it's not in English yet, it will be, <laughs> um, that they have s sometimes have such resistance towards healing and they say, well, what if, but what if I find out that he or she is not the one and I have to break up and I don't want to break up? If you ask that question, how is this thought protecting me? you will find out that it's actually your fear brain keeping you in fear. As long as you are in fear, you are protected. That's what your fear brain says. So you have to stay alert. You have to keep thinking. You can't just relax and let it all go because then a really bad thing will happen. And it is actually not the fact that you will find out that he or she is not the one. That's just the, the thoughts that your fear brain puts to the feeling but you are just really scared to let go of the fear. So you have these thoughts that keep you in fear and in that way kind of protect you. I know it's very weird as soon as you start understanding your fear brain more and more and more, what it needs, how it works. It's so much easier to do this, but you will through questions like this, um, get a bit more understanding of how your fear brain works. How your fear brain works in depth will be in the in the online program that I am planning on making in English. I'm just not sure when, but I will put the wait list down below so you will be um, you can be updated on that. So that was the third one. The fourth one is how am I trying to get control? Um, one of the ways you are trying to protect yourself is to get control. And this comes from a feeling of being powerless and helpless. And you try to get control by um, influencing external factors. So your relationship, your partner, um, but also your feelings and your thoughts. I should not be thinking this. I have to be thinking this. I have to be feeling this. And as soon as you have to, like something must happen, that's control. That's control and it's always fear-based. And it's really hard to let go. I mean, this is also a survival mechanism. So be kind to yourself. Give yourself grace. It's not something to make yourself wrong about. But if you can see how you are trying to get control in every situation, like something happens and you're just like, whoa, I feel so wound up. I feel so tense about that. How am I trying to get control? It really helps you to see what your patterns are. And then also how... Can I feel more in control? So getting, trying to get more control is one question. How am I getting more control? Or how am I trying to get more control? But also how can I get more control? Because you can, you are way more powerful than you think. That is also part of the fearful avoidant attachment style, feeling powerless. So how can you get a sense of control? And a lot of times this comes down to boundaries. Boundaries in all sorts and shapes and forms. And, um, that is also something a lot of fearful avoidance struggle with, with boundaries. But there are so many things you can do, so many boundaries you can set around your time, around your energy, around your vulnerability that will actually help you feel more in control from the inside out. So instead of trying to control things outside of you or trying to control your thoughts and feelings, which is just not possible, nobody can do that and you don't have to, you can control your boundaries. You can control more, but that is a very main core thing. If you start putting up really clear boundaries, that will give you more of a sense of control from the inside out. And then the fifth and last one. Um, what would it look like to be healed from this fearful avoidant attachment style? Um, this is such an important question to, uh, to start healing because the more clear your vision is on what it's like to be healed, the easier it is to step over to that secure attachment. And as long as you don't have a clear vision, your fear brain is like, uh, uh, we're not going there because your, your fear brain needs clarity. It needs a concrete vision to be able to feel safe enough to go there. So it's so valuable, so incredibly valuable to write about this. 
and to just write out what it looks like. Uh, in a way, it's actually scripting. And uh, I don't know if you're into scripting or visualization at all. If you are, let me know in the comments. I'm actually quite curious if um, you've ever heard of scripting or visualization because it's it's also such a powerful tool. I could actually make a video on that, on a few scripting techniques or questions uh, and visualization. So put it in the comments and I will definitely um, uh, take that. Um, but journal on that and then also what would be my identity because a lot of times we get wrapped up in this survivor mode and this um, insecure attachment identity that it's really hard to find out who am I without this trauma and the more you can find that out and the more you have a vision of that the, the easier it is to let it go all right I want to talk for like four more hours <laughs> um, but we're gonna wrap it up um, just to make this video not too long. So these are five really concrete journal prompts to help you at least kickstart your healing journey. They will really help you if you, if you take the time to just journal it out, but writing in and of itself will help you so much. I am so happy you're here. If you uh, want to know more, you can find videos in the description below on how to heal the fearful avoidant attachment style. Um, the one thing I did to heal it, I did more. This is another thing. But yeah, there are several ways to heal it. I am so excited to hear if this helps, if this was valuable to you. Please let me know in the comments below. And thank you, thank you, thank you for being here.